Uh, good morning, Sri Lanka it is, and we have once again a very special guest with us in the studios here at the uh, SLBC in Colombo 7, and it is uh, Professor Jayanath Kalambage, Admiral Professor Jayanath Kalambage, and we will be failing in our duties if we do not formally introduce uh, Admiral Professor Jayanath Kalambage to you. So bear with us, sir, until I formally introduce you to our listeners. Admiral Professor Jayanath Kalambage is currently the additional secretary to the President for Foreign Relations. Of course, Admiral Kalambage served the Sri Lanka Navy for a period of 36 years and retired as the commander of the Navy on the 1st of July 2014. Admiral Kolambage is the 18th commander of the Sri Lanka Navy. He was decorated for gallantry and commended for exceptional services to the Navy and of course the motherland Sri Lanka. Upon retirement from the Navy, Admiral served as the Director for Indo-Sri Lanka Initiatives and Law of the Sea Centres at the Pathfinder Foundation, which is a premier think tank and research centre based in Colombo. Admiral Kalambage has represented the Pathfinder Foundation and, the Sri and Sri Lanka in many bilateral, regional and international fora presenting papers and participating in panel discussions. Admiral Professor Kolumbage holds a PhD from the General Sir John Kotalawala University, a Master of Science degree in Defence and Strategic Studies from the Madras University and a Master of Arts in International Studies from King's College London. His PhD thesis this asymmetric warfare at sea, the case of Sri Lanka, has been published by Lambert Academic Publishing in Germany and the Admiral is also a Fellow of the Nautical Institute of London. A very good morning to you, Admiral Professor. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and it's great to be with you this morning. Thank you. And uh, before we get into uh, the serious uh, issues of uh, of the day, uh, it was really heartening to note, uh, dear listeners, that Admiral Professor Jayanath Kolumbage is a fan of uh, of the radio and he mentioned that uh, the transistor radio in the 70s was uh, a, a big part of your entertainment, isn't it, Professor? Well, yes, because when we were very young or rather even <laughs> younger than you, we did not have television in this country and it was Radio Ceylon. Uh, you know, it was, I think, quite quite a few channels, maybe two or three channels. Yes. And we remember the big transistor radio. Yes. So we used to listen to the uh, English uh, songs because we were really keen to <laughs> study English, learn English also. And that was the only thing, to yes. listen to the people talking in English and listen to the what we call evergreen hits of the 70s and the 80s yes. and we still remember those songs and you know coming from that time because I think that time we really listened to the song very <laughs> paying attention to the details of the music and the song the quality yes. was not that good yes. you know the bass and the rhythm you know you know it's not the quality was not that good but still we enjoyed listening to the uh, Radio Ceylon the English uh, service very much yes. and I think at that time time the Radio Ceylon uh, uh, was one of the pioneer yes. services in the whole region that is and um, if you remember the Binaka Geetmala yes. it was actually going to India from <laughs> Sri Lanka and even now the yes. our generation of people in India talk about the Hindi songs <laughs> they used to hear from Radio Ceylon so that's a wonderful experience yes. and I'm happy to see that you are continuing with the great trends uh, of the yester year. Thank you so much Admiral Professor and you are such a if I may say big bug in the field of defense and uh, international relations and uh, f for us to get that appreciation from you means a lot because we are small radio personalities as you can see it's a small studio so thank you once again well, a small studio doing big things <laughs> thank you admiral professor um, the foreign relations of sri lanka at the moment is uh, is taking a lot of media attention for the exceptional services rendered by the nation at large in terms of repatriation. Yes. Could we please start with um, a mention and an exploration of the commendable services thus far that has taken place during this COVID-19 pandemic? Yes, I think let me begin by saying that COVID is pretty much under control in Sri Lanka. You see, so far we have like 718 cases, but we have to remember that 187 people are cured and gone home. And right now, as we speak, there is not a single patient in an ICU bed. 
So that's a real great thing. And also, uh, why people want to come back to Sri Lanka? Because, you know, there are so many Sri Lankans abroad. There may be students, workers who have gone on scholarship, who have gone to uh, on temporary visa visit. They all want to come back because they feel that Sri Lanka is the best and the safest place right now. And they want to come back because they have confidence uh, in the yeah. country. Uh, they have confidence in the political leadership. They have confidence in the health system. Yeah. They have confidence in the military. So they all want to come back. Now the issue is uh, whether we can accept them all in one go. Yeah. That's one issue we have. Because the, the our foreign ministry actually created a web, web portal and invited Sri Lankans to register. So yeah. according to that, there are about 27,000 people immediately wishing to come back, back to Sri Lanka and among that 26 27,000 and now this figure is actually excluding the figure in the Middle East yes. because the Middle East we have quite a large number of uh, Sri Lankans working doing a yeoman service uh, bringing in very valuable foreign exchange now among this there are about 5,500 students students yes. in abroad uh, studying in various fields and various universities various countries so now what can we do i mean we need to bring them all back to sri lanka but there are certain conditions because one thing we cannot expose anyone coming to sri lanka to the virus here yes. and we also cannot expose sri lankans mm -hmm. to someone coming from another country to the yes. exposed to the virus because we all know we are an island nation and on the, there, is, there are only two ways of getting this virus one is across the ocean which is very limited because the ships come they uh, unload their cargo and yes. they go back so they don't really interact uh, a lot with the people and we can easily control that the other one is air but air travel, you know, last uh, few years is really was a blooming, uh, blossoming industry. And, uh, you know, everybody loved to travel. That's great. Uh, but then we had to make a conscious decision that uh, in order to prevent Sri Lanka and Sri Lankans in Sri Lanka, yes. that we had to or we were compelled to close the airport uh, for inbound travel. Yes. Now, when that happens, large number of people who wanted to come, they could not come. Now, the situation is quite a large number of people are waiting to come. And now, a conscious decision has had to be made. Yes. Who should come first? So the president, the prime minister, the cabinet, they all discuss in detail, uh, listening to the medical advice, listening to the pleas of the parents and decided that the students are the, is the most vulnerable group and therefore they should be brought back to the country first. Yes. Now, if you remember, uh, this actually started in January or February Correct. when a group of uh, Sri Lankan students were living in Wuhan, studying in Wuhan. Now, at that time, Wuhan was the epicenter or the most high-risk area of the world yes. in China, of course, for COVID-19. I mean, that time, we did not even know much about the virus. It was just coming out uh, from China. So, President made a very bold, very firm decision that, we will take these 34 students back to Sri Lanka. Now, at that time, only America and Japan were planning to do that. We were the third country. It was a mercy mission. Yeah. It was a very special mission. And I think hats off to Sri Lankan Airlines who flew in to unknown territory yes. without, you know, without any <clears throat> alternative plan because they could not land anywhere else yeah. even in an emergency no uh, no airport would take them so they flew into wuhan brought these students back to sri lanka and they were disinfected by a proper procedure at our airport taken to a quarantine center and touch wood they were all oh. okay after 14 days so that was the first phase of the evacuation of students and then came after closing the airport on uh, 19th uh, March, right, the situation was that we need to bring people. So the president uh, made a conscious decision that we have to bring students first. Yeah. Now, there again, students are from, you know, all over, from mm -hmm. America, Canada to Australia, New Zealand. Students are yes. also all over. So then he said, OK, let's start from the immediate neighborhood. That is the okay. South Asian Indeed. region. And I'm happy to say as of today, we have completed evacuating or repatriating students from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh and Nepal 
completely. That's great. That's news, a great Professor, achievement. Yes. They are all in Sri Lanka. Uh, they are all in quarantine centers. Yes. And the first group of students are expected to leave quarantine center on the 6th of this month in okay. just two days time. Yes. So that's a good thing. Now, once we have finished the South Asia then our next focus went to Southeast Asia because there are a large number of students study, uh, studying in Malaysia. Yes. Uh, there are medical students in Philippine. Yes. There are some students in Singapore, Singapore. and some uh, little, not much really, in Indonesia yes. and Thailand. Yes. So now we are focusing on that area. Yes. So the first flight from Singapore will come to Sri Lanka on the 6th carrying 150 students from right? Singapore now from Singapore and then we are planning another trip to Malaysia okay. so that crime and once we finish ASEAN then our next move will be to Russian region yes. you know Russia yes. Belarus uh, Latvia Georgia large Eastern number of Europe, e Eastern Europe the, yes. the, and this and part of Central Europe as yeah. well so there is a large number of students uh, coming to uh, we need to uh, bring back to Sri Lanka yes. now while we work like this we got lucky because there are two flights going to London <laughs> Sri Lankan yes. and they said we are operating two flights yes. it's not a burden to you yes. but on our return journey we are going to come empty yes. so if you like we can take some students and yes. we jumped to the opportunity yes. because you see operating a flight in under these circumstances are not easy yes. and it's a very costly affair because you have to pay additional charges yes. you have to get various approvals so we said then the president said okay if the planes are coming empty, yes. try to get as many students as possible from that particular country. Yes. Now, we, fa we found that uh, actually one group already came oh. uh, from UK, oh. a group of 250, including medical professionals yes. who had actually gone for specialization. Yes. They arrived this morning. Now, they have been taken care of. They have been taken to quarantine centers. So, that part is done. Now, the second flight actually is uh, scheduled to operate on the 6th of May. Yes. Now, we found that uh, in London also, not many students to come now because we have evacuated yes. a large <laughs> number today. So, then we said if someone from Amazon America or Canada would like to come to London and join the flight, yeah. please do so. Yeah. So we got lucky because we have two flights coming. without any expenditure to the country. Yes. It's coming. And similarly, there is another flight going to Australia on the 7th uh, of May and they are returning empty. So yeah. we said, OK, we will put some uh, children studying in uh, Australia also. Uh, so this is right now the plan. So yeah. we have to go step by step. We yes. cannot take them all at once. Because the number of students we can take per day is restricted by the fact that availability in the quarantine centers and also availability or the ability or the capacity to do PCR testing, the testing yes. for virus. Because now anyone coming, the first available opportunity, we carry out a PCR test because we don't know uh, the situation in those countries. Now imagine a situation, we bring in a plane load of passengers and if a person is not detected of having COVID-19 yes. but is having, yes. he can spread it to others very easily. Yes. So we want to do the test as soon as they come to the, uh, to the country. Uh, so these are limiting factors but we are doing this step by step, group by group, they are coming to Sri Lanka and I think we are doing a great job not many countries have been able to do this uh, evacuating their students they said you you be there and uh, <laughs> you just hang on there until the situation improves but not in our case because we value uh, life Definitely. very much and we value the this is our future I mean the, the children are the future of this country so that's the progress we have been doing and I think it's a pretty good progress definitely Admiral Professor that's a very commendable process and in stages and I think we are reaching out to the entire <coughs> world to bring back our, our Sri Lankan students since you mentioned it Admiral Professor I think it's it's definitely necessary for us to reiterate and remind our, our listeners as to <coughs> the importance of having a national career oh, at this yes. moment is it? And even though there there were various allegations as to the high cost of ticket and various um, various uh, aspects that were mentioned um, in terms of the high cost, in terms of what is actually happening in the world, yes. I think the fact that we have a national carrier and bringing back or 
citizens is a great thing isn't it yes of course mario you can imagine the situation if we did not have a national <laughs> career yes. we would never have been able to do anything that yes. we do right as you mentioned you see there was this talk that the national career is a burden to the taxpayer mm. and therefore we should uh, sell it or we should privatize it we should uh, you know you know do whatever yeah. uh, is uh, contrary to uh, yes. the interest of the country but you see now if we did not have our own sri lankan airline yeah. we could not have gone to wuhan no way <laughs> no other airline would take that risk yeah. but sri lankan pilots the cabin crew they are actually our heroes definitely right they undertook the risk and they flew into wuhan evacuated the children came back safely right and and then they are after they rose to the occasion by undertaking again mercy flights to many places yes now one example is punjab sri lankan has not flown to punjab mm. before they fly to many destinations yes. in india but not to amrista yes. but then sri lankan decided no we are going to amrista to bring <laughs> our children so we if we did not have a national career there is no way we can do what we are doing now then other important point you mention about the pricing yeah there were some accusation or allegations again sri lanka saying the ticket prices are extremely high yes. and you so they say during the normal time the price is this but the now the price is this but we got to understand this is not a normal time yes. <laughs> this is a pandemic time this is not normal time at all you see some anywhere in the world anywhere okay. in the world everywhere in the world the yes. prices of air travel has really gone up because yes. the flights are very limited yes. very restricted now we have to operate these flights when airports are closed yes. we have to get special approval from government special expenditures to handle the aircraft in that particular country and also you see if we send uh, now in the case of punjab i will take yes. now the aircraft went from colombo to amrista empty yes so zero income in- for the sri uh, airline they have to spend all the yes. money to take their pro- aircraft to punjab yeah. now on the return flight yes there were passengers but then capacity of the aircraft uh, say for, for example larger. 275 yeah. we had only 102 passengers so it's half yes. i mean ne- n- even less than half now the crew right because it's uh, like four and a half hour yes. journey one way and return so according to the international air regulation they have to have two crews yes because they are not supposed to stay in the airport overnight yeah. so two crews like two captains yeah. two first officers yes. two sets of uh, cabin crew so that's double the expenditure that's double the expenditure and everyone has to wear personal protective clothing yes. and then you have to just throw it once you come back yes. another expenditure and then you have to uh, disinfect the aircraft before yes. the journey and after the journey yes right so these are all adding to the cost of the flight ticket and that is the reason uh, why the flight tickets were quite high yes. but i don't think anyone can help it at this moment this is a pandemic <laughs> this is a global health emergency yes. not the normal time so yes. by we we have to be fair by i say if not for sri lankan we would yes. never have done this yes thank you admiral professor for for clarifying that uh, that point as well and reiterating to our listeners and the general public that we are not functioning under normal circumstances yes. and uh, cost has to has to be taken into consideration as well uh, before we take a, a short break uh, admiral professor if you could just um, uh, clarify or kind of give us some good news in terms of uh, the north american students sometimes they may be wondering okay you are bringing back students from everywhere what about us in america and with uh, things with the political situation in america as you know being so volatile and with various accusations could you probably give a give a glimmer of hope to the american yes. students yes well well i not not really a glimmer of hope but i will give you a specific detail <laughs> right because as i told you we got lucky with two uh, empty flights coming from uh, london, london yes. and the second flight is actually coming on the fifth night or yes. uh, the sixth morning yes. and we found that by today we would have we have evacuated most of the students in london yes. so we offered it to canada yes. and america if you can fly to london yes which they are going to do now yes right so we are having from uh, students from ottawa toronto uh, new york yes. philadelphia washington and uh, california yes now they are flying to london transiting 
and they will take the connecting flight on the 5th. So, we have actually done that also. Mm. So, it's not a glimmer of hope. No, Admiral no, Patterson, it's a specific. But, uh, but it, is, it is a specific, it is a promise. We in conversation with a very special guest, Admiral Professor Jayanath Kolambage. And uh, once again, Professor, thank you for coming to SLBC. And if we could talk about the migrant workers in the Middle East, mm-hmm. Professor, they um, contribute to our national economy yes. immensely. And are there any plans uh, for the Middle East in place? Well, actually, there are, there are a large number of Sri Lankans working in the Middle East. And in some places, they have some issues because like they have lost their job yeah. and uh, they have lost their income yeah. in some places. And there is a situation in Kuwait. Uh, Eighteen thousand migrant workers are, you know, now of course uh, some kind of under a general amnesty. Yes. Now the Kuwait want us to evacuate them back to Sri Lanka. Uh, some of them don't even have their passport because yes. it is either with the agent or the household or where they were working. So it's a separate issue altogether because the number is very large. Yes. Uh, that's why we are now first tackling with the student. Yes. But yes, we do understand they are plight and the uh, president is fully aware of it. And soon we will uh, make a plan to bring them down because the number is quite large. Yes. Uh, because as I mentioned, we cannot expose them or we cannot make them vulnerable when they come here. So we have to be sure that we are okay in Sri Lanka and we cannot expose our people living in the country by uh, someone returning from abroad. So it's a two-way thing, uh, a two-way responsibility. Um, uh, I mean, yes, they have been doing a great job, great service to our country. Uh, Now is our du- our job to our duty to uh, welcome them back but it will take some, some time, time because yeah. we need a special plan for that yes. category you need a special arrangement for that category because the simply the, the number is too large too large and in terms of um, uh, the student and migrant worker the difference in the yeah. in the in the situation as you mentioned it's, professor it's very stu- different a student is sometimes helpless isn't yes. it so, actually that's what uh, the president was under the uh, the impression yes. because the students are not really earning yes. money right and they are vulnerable they are yes. young yes and when they don't have the university what can they do yes right and they have to be confined to their dormitories yes. now when they are asked to leave the dormitory what can they do yes so they became the most vulnerable group so that is why we gave priority to them yes. and of course once we finish that uh, the finish the uh, the student group there will be temporary visa travelers yes. and then there will be people who want to come back who have been working there so it will take little time yes. uh, we have to do it in a safe manner yes. not just arbitrarily opening up our skies to everyone but in a safe manner step by step group by group yes uh, professor what about uh, foreign nationals in the country um, is there anything in place uh, a few weeks ago, we ourselves saw on BBC that uh, most of the foreign nationals said they would rather stay in Sri Lanka yes. than actually uh, return home, uh, given the, the the process of quarantine and the health and safety regulations that we have um, enacted in Sri Lanka. But is there any um, is there any development in terms of that that you would like to talk about? Well, you see, when we went to the close down when we went for the curfew there yes. were some foreigners in fact there were some tourists here okay. in in the country yes. uh, now one thing i have to tell you mario our airport was never closed for outbound travelers yes so if somebody wanted to go back they could yes but the problem came the airline stopped operating <laughs> yes. right although the airport was operated uh, yes. open yes. the airlines became very restrictive yes. and uh, one airline which was operating was Qatar Airways yes. so they were carrying passengers away from Sri Lanka so by now those who really wanted to go back have gone back yes and some are staying even yes. some are uh, staying of course some are you know in working in projects as yes. you said they they are quite comfortable here and yes. uh, they are uh, and also in this uh, some of these chinese projects we have some yes. chinese uh, workers here uh, but actually chinese workers were really disciplined in this <laughs> regard you yes. know when they say quarantine they mean it when yes. they say self quarantine in the place of work they really do it yes right so they don't become a burden to the society they don't give any germs to the society yes. so 
not much now. Many people have gone out because we did not really close our airport for outbound travelers. We yes. permitted them to go. Uh, but uh, so there is no big major issue in the country. Uh, now the issue is the people want to come, come back, back, including yes. foreigners. Yes. You know, they, some of project, them because yes. there are projects in Sri Lanka because they are part of that. So they want to come. Yes. Uh, there are senior figures. There are diplomats. There yes. are United Nations or international organization personnel. They all want to come back. So we allow uh, group by group, step yeah. by step. So there is no major issue with the foreigners in the country. And of course, you know, the, this uh, bit of a social stigma in the beginning, uh, the foreigners uh, bring virus, but it's not right <laughs> to do that. I mean, then, you know, some places foreigners were told not to come. You know, yes. there were a few uh, issues in the beginning. But I think by and large, people got used to that. Yes. Uh, the more you understand about the virus, you know, the, it doesn't mean whether you are a foreigner or a local. Yes. If you're not careful, you can be a carrier. Definitely. Right? Uh, yes. Sometimes a foreigner may not carry anything bad. Yes. Uh, I mean, in, in terms of a virus. So, we don't have a major issue right now. Yes. Thank you, Professor, for highlighting the fact that even though the airport is, airport rather is technically closed, it's it was not closed for outbound no, it was passengers. Not. So, as you very rightly yeah. mentioned, anybody could leave yep. uh, the country and head home if they wanted to. They could have, yes. Uh, Professor, we are running short of time, but I need to ask you this because this is your area of special Specialization and uh, the seas. Mm -hmm. What's happening in terms of the seas in uh, in in the nation as well? You know, uh, similar to the app. Ports, the, our ports were never closed. Yes, our ports were never closed. Yes. but only thing there was a reduction in uh, cargo coming into the country because you see the whole global supply chain was yes. interrupted. Yes. right, so the whole global supply chain was interrupted. Yes, now demand for things came down yeah. and the items required mm -hmm. to manufacture things also was a problem. Yeah. So, therefore, uh, there was a reduction in shipping, but the port is operational, yes. 100%. Whatever uh, the the ship is coming, the cargo is cleared, yes. the ships go to the other area. Uh, there were few issues with the shipping because uh, the there are times that the crew want to come to the land and stay yes now we had a problem because now the ships are coming uh, how do we permit that kind of a thing yes. uh, because now we say no foreigners coming into the country yes. uh, now of course you see there are some security personnel yes so what we did was we took some of them yes. and we arranged some special places for them okay so they stay in that place and the navy actually the sri lanka navy undertook the task of quarantining seafarers Yes. So whoever wishing to come back to Sri Lanka could come, but they have to go through the process of uh, quarantine and then only they will be uh, into the society. Yes. So the Navy did that. Uh, but still, there are issues. Now, what do we do with the foreigners? Yes. Right. If they want to come, uh, because what happened earlier was if a crew need to be changed, yeah. they would come ashore to mm -hmm. the land. Then they would go to the airport and go off. Now yes. we don't have a flight to go off. Yes. Right. So that was problem. So we uh, uh, bought some villas like yeah. places like Gaul and under the Navy and the health authorities supervision. Yeah. These people were housed there and sometime they joined a ship from Gaul. They are not really interacting uh, with the society yeah. at large, but they come in, stay there and go back. Yeah. So shipping and of course, when you uh, talk about the sea, there are fishery harbors yes. because they also go out. So we had special health measures at the fishery harbors to check uh, the coronavirus and the preventive measures uh, like yes. checking temperatures of people coming and advising the good uh, health habits. So I think we have managed well, but at a very uh, at a slightly reduced rate of traffic. Yes. Thank you so much, Admiral Professor Jayanath Kolambage, the former Navy commander and a professor now in international affairs. Thank you very much for taking time off your busy schedule to join us here. And uh, one last final parting to our listeners. What would you like to say to our listeners and your, your words of advice to those listening in? 
Well, I think this is not the normal time in the world. We are yes. going through a public health emergency. Yes. This is um, impacting the whole world. I think we are very lucky. We have a very strong, uh, far-thinking leadership in the country, uh, which actually listen to the expert opinion coming from the professionals. And I'm sure, Mario, you would have seen in the recent past, uh, it is not really the politicians who has taken the lead in uh, handling the COVID. Yes, they do quite a lot but it is the officials and yes. the experts yes. now the scientists have come the medical experts have uh, come to the play military has come the government servant they have all found a new role yes. a new lease of life which is a good thing actually we need everyone uh, to run the country we need the political leadership we need the government making machinery and we are doing it so we are very fortunate that when the when it is most needed yes. we rose to the occasion so we are doing extremely well when you compare with any other country Sri Lanka is doing extremely well we are yeah. we are having a very good public health system yeah. and we are doing a very good contact tracing yeah. by using our human intelligence not using technology yeah. so we have been doing it so we have a lot of hope that we will uh, counter this we will control this virus and we will rise above yes. now we need to revive our economy um, we need to revive our agriculture yes. we should be self-sufficient in agriculture yes. we should not depend on any food imports from yes. outside we have rice we have anything we can farm here fruits why do we bring fruits from outside <laughs> so we have to rethink our living we have to rethink of our economic model lifestyle. we lifestyle Agriculture should be a key uh, aspect yeah. in our life, like it used to be uh, 40, 50 years, years ago. ago. So we maybe we need to go back uh, in time yes. a little and find out where we had gone wrong. Yes. Now this is kind of a wake-up call yes. to the whole world, in fact. Yeah. So we need to make use of this opportunity yes. to make the course corrections and find the right path for the future. We have to look after yes. ourselves. That is a <laughs> message that we have to take. Nobody is going to help us in yeah. a pandemic. We need to have our own food. We need to have our own medicine. We need to have our own personal protective equipment. Yeah. If we depend for all these three from outside, we are going to be a finish. So we yeah. need to rethink of our strategy. And But we have great hope for the country. Definitely. Thank you so much, Admiral <laughs> Professor Jainath Kolumbage, once again for those words and for your message today and for speaking to us here at the SLBC. We wish you all the very best, Professor. And uh, we wish you all success in the continued efforts uh, in battling COVID-19 and certainly we wind up this segment with Video Kill the Radio Star because uh, <laughs> Admiral Professor Jainath Kolumbage mentioned this uh, behind uh, when, when the mics were closed.